I only have a couple minutes to make this video, so I'm going to try to get it all out, but I'm definitely activated over this topic. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video about toxic positivity and spirituality and how things can be twisted and kind of used against you when you're in a healing process and how that's kind of abusive and traumatic, you know. But there's another uh, phenomenon called, I'll just call it toxic negativity. <laughs> Let's put it like that. Um, I've been in this community almost eight years, seven and a half years. Yeah, it's June. And I'm just going to tell you how I survived, okay? Anytime I saw the word ecathesia, I blocked a person. I read about it. I figured out what it was. I was terrified of it. And then I stopped looking for it. I was scared that I had it. I didn't even know uh, if I did. I didn't ask the question. I didn't want to know. It was almost as if... I was shielding myself from really knowing what I was experiencing just so that I could get through it. Um, now that I've seen so many cases privately on Zoom and met them and talked to them and heard their symptoms, I definitely had it. I definitely had a very severe case of it. I did not pace. Um, but the inner, I can't even explain it. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not here to make a video about that. What I'm trying to make a video about is like your very life is on the line in this uh, process and I don't think we can afford constant shocks to our nervous system that are scaring us we are reading things think of it like this everyone that's coming off meds that's sick that's experiencing side effects that's in withdrawal that's been cold turkey that whatever you know most of the people in the groups we're all terrified okay we we found out what happened to us and it kind of flips the whole our whole world view on its head excuse me, it changes the way that we believe, believe, it changes our beliefs about the world, our beliefs about medicine, our beliefs about mental health, our bodies, our identities, our personalities, our life, everything gets flipped upside down. Um, that is such a scary and turbulent time. And then you lose control of your own brain chemicals. Everything's screwed up. You're not thinking correctly. Everything scares you. I remember just looking at a coffee cup and it would scare me. You know what I'm saying? Like I would have extremely scary thoughts just looking at an umbrella. <laughs> so the way that I got through it was anyone that scared me, anyone that even protracted people. I'm Listen, I'm one of the worst cases that I know of. Okay. Probably like top 20 or something. Um, I would scare myself. <laughs> like block me. It's okay. If I scare you, block me. I want you to. Okay, because this is another pattern that I see. So people read scary stuff, and then they book a session with me, and then I have to talk them down. Okay, first of all, you're wasting your money. Secondly, you're scaring yourself. Thirdly, I don't want to do that. That is not what I'm here for. I'm not here to talk everyone down from scary stuff that they read. You know, um, this is the truth of the situation. This is like positive thinking versus reality thinking. Okay, here's the reality. Most people heal most of the way. Okay, when I say that, I mean, when you see a protracted person that's like five years out, me, I'm seven and a half years out, we have symptoms, they linger, okay, for the most part, for the most of us, I'm not discrediting the people that, are, that have very severe symptoms very far out, okay, I'm talking about most of us, we are able to function, we do go to the grocery store, we do go to the mall, I travel across the country, and I still have lingering symptoms, and they go in the background, I don't really talk about them. I don't post in groups about them. I don't feel a need to do that. I have rearranged the certain parts of my life that it's affected in a way that I'm okay with it, you know, or I have learned how to just kind of deal with what I have left. I don't know if it'll ever go. I'm not there yet, but I'm living a good enough life right now that my life is worth living. It's not something that I'm afraid of. I'm happy. If I stepped out of the van tomorrow and died, I would be, I'd be fine. You know what I mean? I'd know that I live, lived a good life. Um, so I don't know. This is what I'm trying to get across. I want you to really guard what you let into your psyche, into your mind, into your heart. I know it's really hard to discern like who to trust, who to believe. But what I see, I don't really visit the groups, but they are definitely on my phone. So when I scroll, I can see some of the posts and every once in a while I'll try to comment. But there's people that are brand new to this, that are terrified that they will read one study. They will think it pertains to them. They will post it in a group and they scare everyone. Okay. It's contagious. Your nervous system is not in a sound place to be able to handle that over and over and over and over. 
So please stay in your own experience. Please. Okay. Most people know heal most of the way, like 99.9% of them. Okay. So the probability is in your side. What I also see, and I have to hurry because I have to get on sessions in two minutes. What I also see is remember that your brain is vulnerable to suggestion. It's very fearful in a way you can't even trust what you think. Like, and that sounds gaslighty, but it's the truth. I thought if, if everything that I thought came true, I would be like dead and disabled. You know, like it, my mind lied to me for three years, at least more and, and more lingering into more. Okay. I could not believe anything that I thought. And I just, it was a moment to moment distraction, hope, hanging on to hope. Even if it was a shred of like, Hey, I do know there's people way far ahead of me that have healed from this. And there's a good chance that I could be one of them. If I just hang in there and I don't hurt myself and I shield my nervous system and I stay calm and I just try to focus on the end game. And it's just a matter of time before I get through this. It's just a matter of longevity, extreme patience, radical acceptance, minute to minute, hanging on. It's not fun. Okay. It's an experience I never want to repeat, but everybody does get through it. Okay. So please do not let your brain take you down that negative spiral where I could be this case or what if that happens or what if this happens. First of all, we're not in what if. We're in right now. We're in this minute. You cannot live in what ifs. You cannot look at the scariest stories with people still on six meds and antipsychotics and all kinds of stuff that are still having really bad symptoms because they're still on their meds. They are having their own healing process, okay? You have your own. So do your best to keep your nervous system quiet and as calm and as possible to shield yourself from anything scary or negative or just not in line with the reality. The reality is most people heal most of the way and anything left that lingers, they cope with it. They deal with it. They continue to wait it out. You know, none of us can even say for sure. You know, again, I tell people challenge it all the time. Show me a case of someone 15 years off. I have not seen it. I have never seen that. There's no groups of people from the 60s and 70s that say they were injured by meds. It doesn't exist. So anyway, that is my wish for you. Please just keep keep a bubble of safety and peace and love around you. Whatever that means to you. And shield yourself from things that scare you. It's just not worth it. Your life is on the line. Your, your nervous system and being scared, it's already going to feel like that. You don't need to add to it. All right, have a good day.